Now, more stories, insights, and analysis of Illinois policy and politics. This is Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Policy Institute. Once again, your host, AM560's Dan Proft. Dan Prof back with Pat Hughes, co-founder of the Illinois Opportunity Project on this edition of Illinois Rising. And uh, Pat, uh, it's interesting. We've got a second state legislator weigh in on the topic of legislative pay. In other words, they should get paid even as we're nearing $10 billion in unpaid bills to state vendors and social service provider bills that have been uh, waiting for the resources uh, so that Comptroller Munger can cut the checks to those individuals and organizations that have provided goods or services to the state. And I would suggest that perhaps members of the general assembly have been not providing anything that could uh, be legitimately called a good or a service to the state. Uh, But that hasn't stopped state representative Rob Martwick. He's uh, another sign of a political hack out in West central cook County, Norridge area, uh, following on Kimberly Lightford, the Senator from Maywood, West central cook County, who, chastised Comptroller Munger on the Senate floor saying, you know, essentially we're legislators, we're working, we should get paid, we should be at the front of the line uh, to hell with anybody else who's owed money. That's not our problem, even though actually by definition it is their problem. Uh, and so Martwick said the same thing, calling the delay of lawmaker pay being for having state lawmakers put in the queue with everybody else, just like everybody else who's owed money from the state and hasn't received it yet, putting them in the queue as it pertains to their pay, which they'll ultimately get, but they're going to have to wait like everybody else. As I said, uh, Mark would call that a corruption of our democracy. Uh, What of that? Well, there are two groups of people, Dan, who want to get paid for not doing anything that's particularly important. One group is uh, state legislators because they're not doing their job. The other group is radio hosts. I don't know if you know that. That's the other group that wants to get paid for not doing very much. Fully um, fully funded. Yeah, I I understand that. Um, Well, look, the legislators should be treated like the other people who aren't getting paid. I think uh, Comptroller Munger uh, made a major statement on this at the state fair yesterday and afterwards, and I think she's right. Look, people in the state are suffering. Taxpayers are suffering with higher property taxes. Jobs are fleeing the state. Vendors of the state of Illinois have to wait in line, like you said, to be paid. And legislators should be treated in that same manner. And and actually, they should be treated with a little bit uh, more temerity than that because they're part of the problem, a huge part of the problem why this issue isn't resolved. So what I say to them, and I think this is what Comptroller Munger is saying, but I won't speak for her, is go to work, get something done for the people of the state of Illinois that you get paid to uh, help for your seventy-five, eighty-five, ninety thousand dollars for part-time work and full pensions, and go do something to help our state improve. If you're not going to do that, then wait in line to get paid. Well, and also uh, what Comptroller Munger has unveiled is an idea that she's asking legislators to consider. So, kind of a litmus test for those who are serious about uh, uh, taking a hit like everybody else is taking until they they can collectively come together to stop dishing out hits and start cutting checks that if you don't pass a constitutionally balanced budget, as is required, then you don't get paid at all. It sounds and, like- that, and that can be done legislatively, prospectively, if the General Assembly. So it's a way to kind of uh, put legislators to the test. We haven't had a constitutionally balanced budget in 15 years, and it shows by our balance sheet. So if you're serious about this legislator, individual legislator, every single one of the 177, then sign on to legislation that says if we don't do our job, which is to pass a balanced budget on an annualized basis, then we don't get paid at all. This dovetails, Dan, into our prior segment with Mayor Paul outside of Atlanta, right? If, if these folks, if these legislators were held accountable for not doing their job, like a contractor would, like a real employee would, then they would do their job. But they're not being held accountable. It's not any different than the teachers in, in, in the Chicago Teachers Union, right? They're not being held accountable for not doing their job. And all they want is their pay and their benefits, right? And that's what they continue to want. And they're so privileged. They're so entitled that they can't see the difference between what they get and what they're getting and what the rest of us have to do to get anything and how we are the ones financing their circumstance and their largesse. And it's really off-putting. So I'm very happy that the Comptroller is standing up on this issue. Yeah, I remember... uh... This conversation I had with Kate Cloonan, who's a Democrat rep from the Kankakee Bourbon area, 
a couple of years ago at a dinner I spoke at, I was criticizing legislative pay and suggesting that $75,000 is uh, plus you best for a pension after eight years, plus the health insurance benefits for part-time work is uh, too much, uh, particularly since it's considerably more than all of our Midwestern neighbors uh, per capita. It's the highest in the nation. And I compare that to Texas where they get a modest stipend and they meet once every two years. And let's, let's compare the economic performance of Illinois to Texas and which one has the political professional class. But I was accosted by Representative Kloon and after this speech because she said, you know, how dare you? Uh, you know, get your facts straight. I don't make $75,000. I make $67,000. I said, oh, well, but please, next time you hear me say something so egregiously incorrect, stand up. Stand up and tell everybody here, tell the assembled, I don't make $75,000. I make $67,000. Now, that's before any bump she gets from committee assignments. But let's just take her at that face. Uh, tell them how hard you work and you only make $67,000. Oh, and we don't, you know, it, it used to be you vest for a pension after four years. Well, they bumped that all the way up to eight years. Well, who in the private sector vests for a pension after eight years? Well, this is how this is how craven and how entitled and how ensconced in her own world she is because the people in that room that you were talking to that night i bet you there only a farm bureau yeah, farm bureaus, small, farmers small yeah. percentage percentage of those people would make over sixty thousand dollars and here's the thing i'm a little bit a uh, uh, di little different on this is that i don't care if they get paid 67 or seventy five thousand. i don't care that's fine if they go and do a job if they go and accomplish something for the people that elect them that pay their salaries if they do that that's the American way. I don't care that they get removed from their families and they go down there and get paid. It's getting paid for nothing. Yeah, I disagree. They should be indexed to the median household income and tie their fate to their performance in terms of how Illinois actually performs. Because you can pass, you can even pass a constitutionally balanced budget and it can still be a horrific document. So I want to see Illinois grow. So you're at the median household uh, income level and you only grow as the median household income grows and only by the same amount. Really tie your future to the overall performance of families in the state. Uh, and, you know, and frankly, knock that down a few pegs. Because uh, I got to tell you, I am exhausted listening to Rob Martwick and Kimberly Lightford and Kate Clunan tell me how much of my money they're entitled to.